Good morning YouTube, the Lofty Biker here, it's John Lofty. I'm driving down into Penryn on the Fal. I'm popping down to uh, Ocean BMW Motorrad at Penryn. I've not ridden many um, many demo bikes lately and I rang up Eva down there and I said what you got for me to ride and she said not a lot John because she's got an accent you see but she's lovely she's absolutely wonderful and um, I said well what have you got she said well I've got an XR a GS a GSA or an R9T I said to her is the XR the 9 or the or the thou the new thou she said it's the thou I said lovely that'll do so I said I'll pop down on Thursday morning about half past 10 ish and I'll come and have a ride here we are just pulling in Ever so friendly down here, lovely bunch of people. What better place could you have for a motorcycle dealership? Right on the Fal Estuary. I'll just pull in and park next to this little 300 or 310, whatever it is. So, I'll see you in a moment. I've deliberately not asked him anything about the bike. All I know is it's a fairly new one. Latest model. S1000XR. Quick shifter. We're in dynamic mode, I believe. Yep, yeah, it's a dynamic on the screen. As you know, I've got the 1200 RS, so the screen's quite novel to me. Quite new and novel. It's very, very nice. I'm just going to take a little right round down the lanes and do a bit of a walk round, and then we'll go for a ride. Nice short wheelbase, noticeably lively. Uh, the screen's not really doing a lot, it's fairly noisy, but it's a windy day today, so I'm hoping the sound's okay. I'll just make sure my vents are shut. There we go, the little black and white cross. Yeah, you notice it's not got the torque of a 1200. Brakes are super sharp compared with my 1200, but this is considerably lighter. Here we go, just leaving the village. Well, I must say that quick shifter is so smooth compared with the one on my uh, boxer. It's, it's barely noticeable whatsoever. Just mind this pedestrian because they've nearly always got a dog with them somewhere. Oh, it's a jogger. Yeah, there's one thing you can say that this, uh, what is it, the 1000RR, the race bike, 
The engine's definitely derived from that. I believe there's no shift cam on these. Yeah, the handling's sublime, really. So the quick shifter up and down works excellent. The brakes are superb and the clutch is extremely light. I believe these boys are somewhere in the region of 165 brake horsepower and about 80 or 90 foot pound of torque. That's where you notice it really with the, the inline four. You've not quite got that low down grunt but you've got plenty of top end rush. So really it pays your money, it takes your choice. In this day and age where cameras and police are everywhere. I think I prefer grunt over rush at the moment but I must admit it's very exciting to ride a bike with this much power. When you think it's what I call a tall rounder, a race bike on stilts. Nice bike. I'll just pull up here and do a bit of a walk round. Nobody at bed. As you can see it's a 2021 plate. Let's tell you a little bit about it. This is the BMW S1000XR. 165 brake horsepower at 11,000 revs. 83 foot pound at 9,250 revs. As you can see, it's a chain drive. It's got the Acro on it. It's got the, uh, the daytime running lights on it. This one's fully equipped. It's the, um, the SE. These BMW SEs are about 17 and a half grand plus the extras. This one would probably be near and 18 with the Acro on it. The starting price for the standard bike is 14,290. Full TFT dash and connectivity for telephones. LED headlight, well that's a full LED headlight. No bulbs whatsoever. It's got full riding modes including riding mode pro, it's got the hill start control, they come f fully equipped with three year warranty from new and the good thing is they're only 226 kilos loaded. Seat height of 840 which is reasonably tall so I should imagine some of the shorties would have a bit of a problem with that one but you can get a low seat option at 790 that's quite a big saving that's two inches 50 mil two inches in all money and there's a full 20 litre tank. So I should imagine as long as you're not batting around and really caning it everywhere, 20 litres should be pretty good. Moiler, absolutely beautiful place. So let's go for a bit of a ride. Yes, it's a very windy day today. There we are on the south coast on the Fall Tributary. It's nice to see that uh, we're getting out a little bit more now and the restrictions are easing slightly. We can go to the pub but we've got to sit in a tent. <laughs> I did actually go down the pub the other night and sat in a tent. It's not really warm enough yet. It's although it's sunny, we've had some lovely, lovely sunny weather. It's only about eight to nine degrees. They say today we could have a high of ten to twelve. Um, it's the first day I've gone out without my heated gloves on or heated jacket, so um, it'll be a bit of a test really. And riding this lovely new bike, I've got to say, it, it, it's very easy. To just to settle in and get on and ride. Oh, 
just test out the whole start. So there we are. Big H. First gear. Raise the revs. Starts flashing. Oh, that's beautiful. That is extremely good. I'll do that again just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. There's nothing behind us. I'll just pull in here. Still clear behind. Pull and hold the front brake. Raise the revs until you see the light goes out. Once it's out, absolutely sublime. Yes, that's something else they've improved. They're improving the electronics on these bikes all of the time. Yes, it's certainly quite noisy. I'm not getting buffeting. I'm getting no buffeting really. My head's quite steady. It's just quite loud. Anyway, I'm going to head through Truro. Out on the Laddock Road. Up towards Dam Rolls. And then I'll put a bit of A30 in. So as you can... Um, get an impression of what it's like on the on a dual carriageway or motorway as such okay so we're approaching the outskirts of Truro let's see what this bad boy is like in traffic We don't get a vast amount of busy, busy traffic in uh, Cornwall, but True Row's always busy. So it's a 70 zone, dual carriageway. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Up to the legal road speed. I must say this screen doesn't really do a lot for my helmet. I'm hoping you can hear me, because it's uh, very noisy. Auto blipper works well. Sixth into fifth into fourth. Slowing down 40 mile an hour odd. Screen bearable again. Tesco's Island. We've got the cathedral straight in front of us. Unfortunately, the daffodils have gone over. They looked sublime a couple of three weeks back, but they have gone now. Shame. So we'll see if we can get a bit of filtering in, if we can try. Lemon key to the left. The foul to the right. Mirrors are pretty good, visibility is pretty good. You are tall. Although the bike behaves a little bit like the Thou R, which is the naked race bike as such, it's tall and your visibility is miles, miles better. And with that little bit of a fairing, you do get a little bit of uh, protection. Yeah. Quite a nice bike. I know this is sounding a bit cliche, but it is 2021 and the technology has come on in leaps and bounds with motorcycles. And it's very difficult to buy a bad bike. You might get a bike that's a Friday bike, but that's just unfortunate. Nowadays, the way things are built and put together, it's difficult to get a bad bike. And to be fair, this XR is very nice. When Triumph brought out the 1050, the 1050 Tiger, which was the 17 inch wheels, 
with a bit more power. This is more like that, but where this scores is it's got more power, much stiffer, much more compliant suspension. And well, it's got more of everything in fact. The main thing is that suspension. When it's set in dynamic it, or auto and whatever it is, it's probably a little bit firm in town, but once you get out on the roads and you want to give it a bit of bit of raz, it's excellent. Well I must admit I came through there pretty easy, no problems, no niggles, no nothing. Good viz. One thing I have noticed is the optional DIN socket on the dashboard. That's more or less where I've fitted the one on the RS. For some reason on the RS they stick it underneath your right cheek, below the seat. Don't know why, it seems a daft place for anything for me. But um, I've run a lead up to the dash and I've, I've mentioned mine on the dash. And this one's on the dash. Well I've got to say now I've been out and about for the best part of nearly an hour and I'm not finding any discomfort whatsoever in the seat. Um, we, a number of us have commented on the various forums about the XR seat and to be fair I'm finding it comfortable. It, it seems to hold me in a, a position where I've got support at the rear when I'm accelerating and I don't slide forward too much into the tank. It sort of cradles you. Um, I'm a fairly big bloke, 6 foot 5, 17 stone with long legs and uh, I could quite easily ride this all day I think what I do like about this bike is its lightness 226 kilos of the full tank of fuel well okay I've not got a full tank of fuel so I picked it up it's, it's about a third of a tank but 226 kilos it doesn't sound a lot lighter than the RS's and the R's and the GS's but when you're talking 20 to 30 kilos most of you when you go on holiday you take a suitcase with you that you can hardly pick up and that's 20 kilos so when you're loading two of them in the car that's nearly 40 kilos one in each hand 40 kilos now if that can put it into perspective to you this at 226 is the best part of two suitcases lighter than a GS Adventure and you put the fuel in the Adventure the 40 whatever it is 36 litres or something and it's even heavier so you're talking like an RT three suitcases an RT absolutely scary you don't realise because most motorbikes tell lies to you with the weight as soon as you roll in soon as you've got your momentum travelling forward with you the weight seems to vanish until you come to a situation as an island or a traffic light or a hill or an off camber junction where you need to put your feet down and you can't quite reach that's when you notice dead weight when you're not moving but like I say 226 kilos soup. So here we are, we're on the A390 leaving Truro. I'm going to take the Probus Ladock Road, the B3275. Now this is a lovely road. It's got a little bit of everything on it. It's got a lot of single white lines, double white lines, overtaking lines, 30s, 40s, nationals, bends, you name it, it's got the lot. I just dispatched this car. Yes, um, this, this bike certainly takes off when you want it to. When you're doing about 15, you just drop it into fifth and pull the throttle back. It's quite instant take up. So here we are, we'll take a left here. This is quite a popular route with CAM, Cornwall Advanced Motorcyclists. Part of the Road Smart Gang. And I've got a very intuitive, interactive group. They organise lots of rideouts, trips away. I'm not a member. I 
not been a member since I came to Cornwall. I um, lapsed my membership because I'm too busy once I start work. But this is a good group and if anybody who's in Cornwall wants a bit of extra tuition, you can't really fault camp. So we're in the National. I'm just going to follow the road down. Very, very easy handling bike. You only have to look where you want to go and the slightest of pressure on the inside of the bars and over she drops and the quick shifter hates your progress up and down that box you barely need the brakes which is something that you don't normally say on a full in the bike the auto blipper tends to scrub the revs off not bad for a full cylinder machine coming from lighting to shade this road can be a little bit moist in the winter but during the summer months it's quite nice these double whites don't really help much but there over the years there's been a number of accidents on this road because as you can imagine it used to be a, a national all the way down and people used to fill the boots on it because it's such an attractive road to ride I'll dispatch the uh, transporter in a sec. Here we go. Yes, it's uh, got some go, this boy. Um, I suppose the ultimate is to compare it with the benchmark at the end of the day and I suppose these boys it is the new speed triple the 1200 speed triple and the uh, the Ducati and of course the uh, the absolute raving bonkers Super Duke car all I can say is that these style of bikes are great fun to ride there's no taking away from them. they are absolutely amazing to ride but I'm not so sure how long you'd keep your license. Like I say, when you're riding the boxers, because of all the low down torque, you tend to be sort of between 30 and sort of 65, 70 most of the time. But this and these style of bikes tend to make you want to have that rush, give it a bit of stick, a bit of thrash. And I, they do make you naughty very very naughty so I would you know if you was in the market for a 160 plus brake horsepower motorcycle I think I'd be a bit mindful of uh, of my license they do do a smaller XR I'm not sure it's an 850 or 900 I think it's a 900 but that's a twin uh, it's not the most engaging of twins, but it's a nice bike. They've, they've altered the uh, the crank angles on it this time to make it a little bit more entertaining to ride. More like the Tiger, the new Tiger, with a 270 tank crank angle. I should imagine it'd be easier to sort of be in control, if you like, of speeds. Because literally, I've come out of that up there. I've gone bip, bip, bip. And I'm doing 60 and I'm not even trying. Plenty of poke. We'll clear New Mill and I'll give it a bit of a blast again. The Yodel Man. Well, I will say it's quite easy in fourth gear to, to ride along at 40 mile an hour. Still no problems with the seat. Let's give it a bit of beans now, see if we can have a bit of fun. Unfortunately, we got double whites. We'll just drop back slightly. Doesn't look much respite. I'll pick you up again when we get past this car. Okay, so we're just leaving the island. Let's just test it out. So we're 
Ticking along at 30, second gear. Second to fourth gear, in a matter of seconds, you can be doing illegal speeds. I'll just get past this lorry and we'll... Okay. So, six gear. Six gear, 50 mile an hour roll on. Not bad at all really. I must admit when you drop it down to fourth it goes a little bit better. And you get such a lovely scream off that acro. And the good thing is the brakes will haul you up extremely quickly because at 226 kilos you're not carrying much rolling mass. I'm going to have a coffee now and have a little think and then I'm going to do a little bit of motorway work. The final test, I'm just going to have a razz up the A30 to see what it's like at motorway cruising. So here we are. This is the closest thing we've got to a motorway in Cornwall, which very much like what you would encounter if you was over in France or Spain. It's a dual carriageway. Very much in the mould of an auto route or an auto barn. So I'll just get it up to 70 cruising speed. There we are, I've got the cruise set smack on 70 and yes, it, it is pretty vibey through the bars. Whether a set of grip puppies would suit that out, I'm, I'm not actually sure. I'll just knock it back off because uh, he's only doing 68 in front. So we're going down Fradden Hill, back on the cruise. Quite interesting, the speedo is pretty close to the sat nav, we're showing 71 on the dashboard and 68 on the sat nav. Um, I'm not getting buffeted as such, if I very little buffet him, but quite a lot of wind noise, but I'm not wearing plugs today, because I was only out and about local, but um, yeah it's quite windy, so I'm just going to do a test where I open the yeah, you open the visor, even the slightest amount, and um, you get a lot of wind noise. I'll just relax my grip. Yeah, it's a nice bike. I think I could do it on this. Whether it would be... And you got two up, I'm not so sure what the, the actual payload is. But I'm experiencing quite a bit of side wind. And I'm not really being blown around a bit. So it, it doesn't create the sail effect you get with some adventure bikes. But saying that, I've got no top box on and I've got no panniers on to actually catch the wind. But yeah, that's pretty smooth. That is 71 in sixth. 4,800 revs. Yeah, very nice. What's my final appraisal of the BMW S1000XR? Well, I've got to say, I think it's an absolutely fantastic motorcycle. It does everything. The one thing it does a bit too well, 
is go. It certainly goes. It's got loads and loads and loads of power. You know, if you could take this back in time to sort of like 03, 04, stick it on a track, you'd embarrass people. It's got that much power. Superb brakes. It's a really good road bike. It's light, manoeuvrable, and I've got to say, Malcolm Klein, you were right. The seat is comfortable. I've got no problems whatsoever with this seat. And uh, it wouldn't bother me to get on it and ride two or 300 mile and enjoy myself. So I'm gonna take the bike back now to BMW at Falmouth and say thank you very much to Eva and the team there for lending me the bike. So until next time, this is the Lofty Biker, John Lofty, saying ta-da for now, ta-da.